Welcome all you wire tappers out there. I've got a real special show for you guys today. You'll be really pleased to know that we get to talk to the real Donnie Brasco, retired FBI agent Joe Pistone. And as an added bonus, we have his podcasting partner, actor, screenwriter, Leo Rossi. You know, I don't know if you guys have watched, or correction, I, I don't know if you guys have listened to this uh, podcast, this new podcast they've got. I, they've got one season out, it's called Deep Cover. And these guys Real co-host. Yeah. Say that again. It's deep cover of the real Donnie Brasco. Oh. I don't know if you guys have listened to this or not, but uh, yet, but that together they co-host a great podcast. It's brand new. They got one season in. It's called Deep Cover, the Real Donnie Brasco. Welcome, Joe and Leo. Uh, it's really great to have you guys here. Oh, okay. yeah, man. And now you're in Missouri. I'm Leo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kansas City, Missouri. All right. Okay. Uh, when was the last time the uh, – oh, no, I can't I can't rag on you for the Royals. No, you can't. No, because you got the Chiefs, baby. Yeah, and we got the Chiefs, too. Now, now the Royals wasn't that long ago they were in the World Series and won it. Went twice and, and won the second time not that long ago. Oh, that's so. a sports fan for you. All right. <laughs> yeah, don't rag on me about the Royals. I love my Royals. We just had a bad year this year and last year. What are you going to do? No, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very interesting because um, I, you know, I was passing through Kansas City and I found out that one of the guys in, in college that I was with, Frankie Bowl, was an announcer there for the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was a little halfback in Villanova. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> But the star of the show is Joe Pistone, a.k.a. Donnie Brasco. So um, the stories come from him, not from me. All right. Uh, you know, Joe, uh, how'd you guys first get together? How'd you used to get started doing this podcast? Well, Leo, you or me? Oh, go ahead. You, man. Well, we got a mutual friend uh, by the name of Bobby Marasco. And uh, Bobby's a uh, screenwriter, director, Academy Award winner for the movie Crash. And uh, Bobby's a, niece, a guy from the east side of New York. And uh, I've known Bobby. I knew Bobby for a couple of years. And back uh, around, oh, 21 years ago, Bobby come up with an idea uh, to write a TV show about me <clears throat> called Falcone. We had one season on CBS and uh, Leo was uh, <clears throat> good friends with Bobby. Leo had known Bobby for many years. So I was out in California with Bobby and, and uh, discussing this show and uh, we needed a, uh, a lawyer a mob lawyer. So Bobby says, uh, I want you to meet a friend of mine, an actor, Leo Rossi. I said, well, I know the name. I don't know Leo. I never met him. Now this was about 21, 22 years ago. I said, never met Leo, but he's a good actor. And he said, well, let's take a meeting and see what you think. So we have this meeting and uh, <clears throat> after a while, I said to Leo, you know, Leo, I like you, but you fucking talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. Yes, he did. <laughs> and that's how that's how Leo and I first met, and we clicked. He was in he was in our uh, my TV show, and from there we went on to work together, uh, producing a couple other movies. We became partners in that, and. Uh, I had a one uh, a one man uh, play on one of my books uh, called "The Way to Wise Guy," and um, so uh, actually it was uh, it was Maresco and Leo's idea, and uh, we were writing it, writing the play, and <laughs> it just dawned on me who's going to play me. <laughs> And Leo kind of likes, look down, you know. <laughs> and 
it's me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's how we met, Gary. We've been good friends ever <laughs> since. And, and like I say, we've worked on a lot of projects together. And we just, our personalities click because I don't talk. And Leo never stops talking. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, well, interesting. Uh, he, he makes you talk on the podcast quite a little bit because you got to tell those stories. And, and oh, that's what yeah. this podcast is all about, is being a storyteller. And, and Joe, you're a great storyteller. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. And you know something, Gary? The, the beauty of it is, I mean, these stories that he tells, he tells them in his own way because he stayed alive as long as he did in deep cover because he didn't talk too much. Yeah. He was trusted. He was there. He was the guy. And, uh, you know, now when he goes on a set, he doesn't have to talk too much because <laughs> you hear all the whispers. Is that, is that him? Is that the guy? Yeah. Yeah. The guy with the creases in his pants like razors. Is that the guy with the collar starched on his shirt? Is that the guy? Yes. That is the guy. Drives me nuts the way he dresses. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. He's one of those guys that gets called out in the middle of the night. Looks like he just stepped out of a band box. I remember those guys. I'd look like get called out in the middle of the night. I'd be all ruffled and blurry eyed. These guys look like they, they've been waiting for the call. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, you, you, you got this. I, I know. There's, I know those there's, guys. <laughs> there's one other thing. I, you know, I used to play football and I, and I'm from an Italian family. He is too, but I like food. And when I eat too much, I wear it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I get chubby. I get everything. He never finishes his plate. He always leaves something on the plate. Oh, it drives, oh, it drives me, me crazy. I know. Drive me nuts, man. But there's a place in heaven for me. I know. Dealing with Mr. Pistone. <laughs> Well, I tell you, I, I've listened to this whole first season. Uh, I, I had been listening to it, and I kind of got off of it. Then when this came up, I got back in and finished those last two or three. And some great stories in there. And, and, and you know, uh, I've had Joe on my show for it. He did a little short soundbite for me. I, I've got a friend here in Kansas City that actually helped put in the penitentiary back in the day. And and he came out. We, we've got to be friends lately. And, and he heard Joe say something to the effect of, I'd hate to be Lefty Ruggiero's cellmate. And, and this guy said, you know, he said, I was Lefty's cellmate. And he is a pain in the ass. So it was a really he fun, was, fun did show. Did you know that, Joe? <laughs> yeah, did you well, know that? That's, that's why Gary, I was on his show a few months ago. <laughs> oh. It, it was mainly this guy telling his stories about Lefty and and, and what they did together in the penitentiary. And, and, they, and I said, you know what? And you're not the only one who thinks he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Joe Pistone thinks he is too. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate that, Joe. It was it was a real popular show. Well, all the all the listeners really liked that show, and I, I liked it too. I thought it was uh, I thought it was, a little, it was a little bit different sort of a show. It's nice to have somebody from both sides uh, on the same show every once in a while. That's hard to do. Yeah, yep, it is. Really hard to do. So I, I guess. Uh, you guys, in, in this first season, what, what was maybe your favorite story out of this first season? The one that probably maybe got more response on. Uh, Leo might be able to tell us about the response. I well, know. I, um, you know, I, I thought I knew just about everything uh, with Joe, and he has surprised me on a lot of things. But the one that got the biggest feedback was when he told the story that uh, Sonny Black gave him in his undercover role as Donnie Brasco the contract to kill uh, the son of a capo who was one of the three capos in the big, you know, murder. Right. And um, they really thought that uh, this fella Bruno would, you know, he would have revenge. And they wanted him erased. And they th thought enough of Joe, and he cleared it. Sonny cleared it with the big boss to have Joe do the work, as they call it. Wow. And um, so it was like, okay, uh, Joe, he went to the FBI, and he told him, look, let's if you find this guy, Bruno, 
will set up a stage murder. And if I find him, I'll tell you where he is. Then we'll stage it that way. And they'll think that I did my duty here. Because you don't get paid for contracts. I didn't know that. <laughs> no. Joe told me. That's just part of the deal, you know? Yeah. And um, it's a duty. So uh, I'll, I'll take it to that point. And Joe, take it from the point when Sonny Black comes out of his office, okay? When, when he gives me the contract, you mean? What we know when he comes out of his office to tell you they located him. Oh, well, we were in the club one day and uh, <clears throat> telephone rings and Sonny answered it and I see him scribbling down stuff. And uh, finally he says to me, Donnie, here's, uh, they got Bruno, he's over in this, this apartment over in his place over in uh, <clears throat> Staten Island. So what are you going to do? You know, you got the contract. So it's your duty to make sure the guy gets killed. So we get, uh, there's other guys, other guys in the crew were there. Now I can't go alone. So these guys are coming. So what do we do? What do I do now? If you turn down a contract, you're the guy that gets killed too, because that's just part of being part of the, part of the mafia. And, uh, so we saddle up, get in the car, telephone rings, Sonny says, hold up. And, uh, he's on the phone, comes back and he said, bad information. But in my mind, if we go there, and Bruno's there. Uh, <clears throat> Bruno's Bruno's probably going to be a dead man, because I'm not I'm not going to at that point in my undercover operation, which I've been with these guys now over five years. Uh, going to say, hey guys, I'm an FBI agent, you know, uh, and uh, we're not going to do this. You're all under arrest. Well, I don't have any identification. I'm an FBI agent. Been with these guys now for over five years. So what are they going to think? They're probably going to think I'm, a, I'm an informant and they don't have any problem killing informants. But my, my, my thought was I either, I go through with it and I take my chances with the government later on, see what, the, see what they'll do to me. Luckily, you know, that phone call came through quick enough that, uh, that it was bad info and, and we didn't have to go. Uh, but you know, when you're in those type of deep cover situations, you don't have a, anybody with you, you're by yourself. You've uh, ingratiated yourself to the point with these guys that uh, you're basically, they, they, they consider you one of them and you do what you gotta do to stay alive. Because I always, I always say, there's only one person when you're working undercover that's gonna keep you alive and that's yourself. Can't depend on anybody else to keep you alive. Interesting. You know, we had a, we had a kid in Kansas City here, and this wasn't really, uh, the guy told him he was going to, uh, if he killed somebody, he would make him a member of the mafia. It was kind of a setup deal. And really what he was going to do is just trying to get him alone to kill him. To, uh, and I've heard of that up in Chicago one time, uh, uh, recruited a guy to go along and go on this hit, but then you get him out, you know, with guns and you get him out of the way where nobody really knows where he is because he's not going to tell anybody where he is. And then it really was a setup to kill him. Did any yes. of that ever run through your mind? They might have been a setup on you? No, not at that time because I, I was pretty much embedded with these guys. And I had to, you know, I mean, I had been given a contract to kill Bruno, you know, uh, <clears throat> probably a month before, a month and a half before. So, no, that, that, that wasn't okay. The, I'm just curious. And you said you checked it out, I believe. Did you, I mean, you just take Sonny Black at, at his word that this uh, Bruno Delicato ought to be killed, or did you ask anybody else? Did, I mean, you know, how, well, no, I'm just figuring the trust level here. Well, no, because they had, <clears throat> they, uh, this, the crew I was with, Sonny Black and, and other individuals, uh, had set up a hit on three other individuals, and it's, it, and Bruno was supposed to be there. It was supposed to be four guys getting hit, getting killed. 
three guys showed up. They killed those three guys. Bruno didn't didn't make the meet, so that's okay. That's how he escaped getting killed in that that initial hit. Interesting, interesting. It's a uh, it's a it's a dangerous dangerous world that you inhabited, uh, which all kinds of double dealing goes on and. Uh, there's it's, no honor amongst thieves and no honor you really uh, you just never know uh, you know as they say it's it's your best friend that's going to come and set you up in the end <clears throat> that's the way it normally happens in a mob you know yeah boys chances are you know the guy who, who who whacked you yeah yeah what do they say it's uh always the friend who does the deed yeah, yeah. yeah. right yeah <laughs> now you know Joe, um, we, we've had a lot of episodes that, uh, you know, people have reacted to strongly, but I think the biggest compliment that both of us appreciate is that when people, you know, uh, they email us and everything, and they, they said, God, we feel like we're just sit down having a beer with you guys. <laughs> or we just feel like, you know, you, you, you're just having a cup of coffee and we're joining you. And um, that's not easy to do, as you know, Gary. Yeah, I know. That's yeah, the ultimate that, compliment to a podcaster, though. Yep, yep. It, and and we take it uh, we take it serious. Um, in our second season, there's going to be surprises, big surprises. Um, number one, Joe quit the FBI, and we'll explain that whole scenario. And they were. Well, some of the hierarch were begging him to stay. And then we're going to get into the reasons why he did leave and then why he came back. He came back. So well. that's, uh, that's a, and then the trials, you know, when Joe was finished doing deep cover, where sometimes he only saw, saw his family three times, maybe in a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, when he tells me that, I say, if I'm with a guy on Easter Sunday morning, if I'm with a guy on Christmas Eve, if I'm with a guy at all these times, I, where's my suspicion? He's always there. He's there. And um, he built up a factor there that, um, you know, was was really great. Uh, and the funny thing is, Joe's, Joe's a mild dude until... Someone calls him, oh, so you were the informant. Oh, boy. <laughs> Joe, Joe, are your ears red now? Because yeah. he, he jumps through hoops of fire on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that story on the podcast about Joe when you're back down on Mulberry Street and somebody drives by and, and yells out, oh, you're the rat or something along that lines. <laughs> <laughs> you're a rat. Mother effort, you know. <laughs> but you know, I had another guy was down there. I had another guy yell at me. He recognized me. I was down there uh, with a film crew, and uh, this guy says, "Hey, Donnie, did you do enough damage in this neighborhood? You had to come back." <laughs> and I said, "Obviously not, because I didn't put you in jail." <laughs> Started laughing. Some of them got. Some of them have uh, senses of humor. Sense of humor. Yeah. I think, I think another good episode too, Gary was. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but the uh, uh, the tape conversations with myself oh. and Jerry. Uh, that got that got a good response. Yeah. From, uh, from people. Yeah. Those were great. I, I tell you, I really enjoyed the way you you have, and I understand you have to come back at, at Lefty. You've got to keep coming back at him strong. Otherwise, oh, yeah. he owns you, and, and you're just a pushover to him, and, and it's all downhill after that. It's really interesting how you did that. Exactly, because you don't, you don't want to be a mark, you know? You Not in that world. Considered a mark, so you have to act like you would act in real life, you know? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that was a well, good one. When Joe was uh, putting together his, um, not Bible, Joe, what do you call it? When you put your, your uh, legend? Legend. Your yeah. legend. Okay. He told me that he tried to keep everything in there very close to his own personality 
so there was no acting involved. Now, obviously, he wasn't a jewel thief. He had to learn that. But everything else was, you know, Joe wasn't putting on a character. Correct, Joe? Correct. You can't. You, uh, <clears throat> the main thing in, in undercover is, is, is maintaining your own personality, your own character. Uh, so, you, so you act normal. So you do act normal and natural. Interesting. You know, that, that works in all areas of police work. I, uh, I was once interviewing somebody. And I'm the kind of guy that will just sit and, and shoot the shit and, and get to know you. And, 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 you know, pretty soon, you know, you're talking to me. I'm not the tough guy. So I'm trying to be tough with this dude. He looks at me. He said, man, he said, I've been cut from every end. He said, what are you trying to play? You trying to play something here? I said, okay, this ever interview's done. I can't be the tough guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, and you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, when I do play the tough guy, you know, uh, there's always that magic word, cut. <laughs> yeah. I can do it again. Yeah. In his line of work, there ain't no cut. Ain't there no ain't cut. no cut. No retakes. No I, always re tell, I always tell him, Gary, in our line of work, there's only one take. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> you better get it right the first time. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And th the interesting thing is, um, you know, when you're hanging around somebody, uh, as much as he and I have, our families are friends. Uh, he and I were on the road for four and a half months, right, with the play in Chicago. And uh, they used to call us the Armo Twins. And people say, <laughs> Armo Twins? What's that mean? Because we got everything on the arm. <laughs> Everything we be, yeah, baby. <laughs> it's like being in the mob, man. <laughs> it certainly is. You look at and Chicago's a great town for that. Yeah. They're they're very generous and uh, and everything. And um, uh, we had a good time, although he watched me like a hawk. <laughs> watched me like a hawk. Sometimes after the show, go out have a couple of glasses of wine, and maybe I ordered the thirty. He said, "No, no, he doesn't want that." I said, "What do you mean I don't want that?" He said, I don't want you puffy on stage tomorrow. <laughs> That's hey. what I was dealing with. Huh? <laughs> He'd be a tough guy to work for. I can see that right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> he know, does Barrett, not suffer fools. Uh -uh. Oh, God. You're like I my think, son. <laughs> I think, uh, I think the, the, the people, the listeners, the audiences, I think they'll like our you know, I, I think I really enjoy our podcast because it, it isn't scripted. Right. Uh, I give Leo topics, you know, of, of my 27 years in law enforcement. And then he just chooses them <clears throat> and, and throws them out there. So, you know, we're not reading from a script. No. It's, it, it's strictly from the heart. It's strictly off the cuff. And, uh, I think, uh, I think that's what the, the audience that we do have, I think that's what they like about it. And I think anybody that we can pick up, you know, that listen to your show uh, and then will we'll hopefully pick up on our show, uh, we'll get from that. Yeah, yeah. that's, it. that's um, how it works. Every, the rising tide lifts all boats, as they say. So yep. uh, help yep. you guys out all I can here. And, you know, he, uh, what I learned, I'm, I'm a movie business guy. You know, that's the business I'm in. And what I learned was when they told us, oh, you got good length. What the, hell, what the hell is length? What they, I guess in the podcast world, that means when people tune in, they stay on. Oh, yeah. yeah. They they the whole okay. Thing, yeah. And they get, so they, now they, I know what that means. All and, right. And those uh, podcast people, the, uh, uh, the host, they know how long people listen to it. Apple knows yep. how long people listen to it. Yeah. People shut it off right away. Why you got to go? You down know, I didn't algorithms. even know how to, how to go on podcasts. Um, with ours, we're on Spotify, which I guess is becoming larger and larger and larger. They bought up a couple of the companies. Yeah. And then we're on Apple podcasts. Right. I guess that's iTunes. And then Jam Street Media. Yeah. That's our company that produces the show, um, you know, so they can get, they can get us either anyway, you know, yeah. and, and, and actually, uh, actually it, you can get this anywhere with any of the podcast apps. 
there's all these pod- I get you through Stitcher, I think. Uh, uh, it's an yeah. Android app. You got an iPhone, then the only thing you've got is the Apple. So you're going to get it through Apple more than likely. Maybe Spotify yeah. has something, but but every one of these little apps, Google, Amazon, they've all got apps. And once you feed that into to iTunes, then it goes out to all the rest of these apps sooner or later. And so eventually right. you're at all now, the apps. I don't know you much. Okay, yeah. we're just meeting here, right? But I know you're going to love this joke. <laughs> Even Joe liked this joke, and, and, and he doesn't like jokes. Um, so a guy goes for a job interview. The interviewer said, what do you think your biggest fault is? The guy said, uh, I think my, my biggest fault is my honesty. The interviewer said, I don't think honesty is a fault. The guy said, I don't give a fuck <laughs> what you think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you could use that. All right, I'll give you credit one time. All right, <laughs> all right. So I, I think we've probably pretty well covered it here and got you going. Uh, I guess uh, next season the stories are going to be more. I, I thought maybe we we're going to spread out into other, have other guests or something that worked under deep cover or undercover. But you're going to continue oh, no. to talk about Joe and and going to court, which will be quite interesting. Uh, well, I, you know what? Now, uh, I, I am remiss on this because this is my duty. Uh, we have also, and another bonus episode, which will come out in a couple of weeks, oh. we interview a warden, a warden that was a system warden at the Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary in Pennsylvania, at Terminal Island in California. And we got it from the inside now. And Joe and he had great conversations, you know, because they're, they're working, you know, sort of in the same business, but one on the outside, one on the inside, yeah. you know, and Joe has a list. We look, we may even have Johnny Depp on there. <laughs> and where do you oh, see the way to, is thumping. <laughs> where do you see the way the girls <laughs> jump on that podcast? Yeah, and, yeah. um, and the, the men that Joe has worked with, uh, one of them was the one who instituted the uh, all the wiretapping for the FBI. Um, then he has uh, a friend. See, these are all friends of his. Yeah. So it's not, you know, all that breakthrough, the awkward stage or something <laughs> like that. And it's just one was the first female SWAT girl. And so, so we will have interviews and that will okay. intersperse the second season oh, oh, good, and good. uh thank you for picking that up gar sounds great sounds like he's gonna be or a, shall i just call you gj gj yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh leo this has been great you guys out there and wiretappers uh don't forget to go look up Deep Cover on your favorite podcast app. If you got an iPhone, you get it on Apple, of course, and and all the rest of them. Like I told Leo, like I advise Leo <laughs> about, uh, you get it on all your apps. It's a great, it's a great podcast. I promise you'll enjoy it. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, sir. Thank right. you. Take care of yourself. Uh, you too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.